Hey guys, it's Ricky. Today I'm going to tell you the backstory of why I became a web developer. Stick around. During my journey of becoming a web developer, I had a lot of people ask me, why are you doing that? You can't just go and decide to make things on the web. You have to go to school and get a computer science degree. I hope it works out. And it did. <laughs> of course, I did my research and I studied. You do not have to go to school to study, but let's take it to the very beginning. When I was in college, I had my own small business as a mobile DJ, and I would do multiple events for my university, for local bars, and for weddings. And one of my clients was a local bar who let me do their promotions, and I got a certain amount of the sales on top of my flat rate. This taught me how to promote, how to do social media, and how to market a little bit. I was really frustrated because I didn't have the skills such as graphic design or video production or even just marketing in general, but real marketing, not the four P's, price, product, placement, and promotion. I'm talking about social media and advertising on Facebook. I was really frustrated and started to understand that, hey, the skills I'm learning in college are not applicable to the real world. So. I took it upon myself to learn something that I had to use when I got into a job, and that was typing. Typing fast. I would go to all my courses in my last semester and just type on my computer, really impress the professor, and really I was just doing typing lessons. And that was actually a good thing for me. And that's the core of all of my online work, is good typing and keyboard so shortcuts. They save a ton of time, allowing you to learn more in a given amount of time. It was getting pretty close to graduation, but I finally managed to get a okay job at a credit union in their administrative office, working as a online service specialist. So dealing with online products, customer service emails, uh, online bill pay, if you've ever heard of that. And I was happy to just have a job, but this was definitely an entry level job. Now at the time, it was a small department and it was just me and another guy. And we just have to whip out as many emails as we could, but it wasn't sustainable. So I decided to get really good at Microsoft Office products. I got a certification in Microsoft Outlook, and this is where I started doing a lot of that self-study. I learned through a lot of books, the, the Microsoft Office Bibles and the Microsoft Office uh, certification prep, preparation guides. And I went to a certification center and got my Microsoft Outlook certification. During this time, the company had a lot of after-night online courses that team members would give to the entire credit union. And because I got that certification, they let me teach Microsoft Office products. I taught Word, Outlook, Excel, and PowerPoint. It was a lot of preparation, and I had to study a lot and know my stuff. But I was able to use this in my actual work and it taught me how to learn and teach, present, create content. It was a great experience. But, you know, I was only making $12.50. That's not enough to live on, especially with a college degree and a certification. So I tried to move up quickly and the company did not like that at all. So I stayed put which was a bummer because I was learning all these things, speeding up my workflow, and then the department I had grew by a lot, and they needed it. Everything's going online, we know that. So I had a lot more time on my hands because one, I really learned how to use the products, two, I automated a lot of the responses I had for customer service emails, and three, I had a whole department there. I spent all the time I could learning graphic design learning how to draw, you know, basic principles of graphic design, white space, uh, history of graphic design, just sitting there with all the free time I had learning those things. Then I decided to get really serious about self-education and I got what's called a Net Promoter Score certification, which is all about customer service metrics and how to really turn them into a cornerstone of growth. Now, because we use it through work, I got a discount of $800. I got the certification, and again, the company did not like that at all. That was concerning to me. It, it was apparent that this environment was not conducive to learning. And so I realized that I could not stay here. This place was not for me. 
Now, during all this time, I had delved a little bit into HTML, CSS, uh, learning about coding, learning about websites. I wanted to get a website up for my DJ business because ironically, I made a ton of money from coworkers that wanted their weddings done and they needed a DJ. So I wanted to put a website up. I learned a little bit of WordPress, put a basic site up there, but was really frustrated with how uh, clunky the tools were and how I didn't have any graphic design skills, any software skills. So I learned Corel Draw, I learned a little more about WordPress, and then I got serious and got into Treehouse. I had enough free time at work because I had such a huge department and I'd improved all my processes that I would just constantly learn coding. Coding on Treehouse, coding through books, uh, coding through forums, all the things I could do. HTML, CSS, a little bit of jQuery, a little bit of JavaScript, and learn about it. And I had applied to a lot of jobs there and I knew that they were not gonna move me up. They did not want to move me up. But at $12.50, I can't afford to be there. I took it upon myself to get skilled up. I, all at the same time trying to apply to other jobs outside of the company, looking for other jobs, applying for anything that said HTML, CSS, and any of that stuff. I still was not up to par. It was at this time that I realized I had to make a serious decision. I was stressed looking to go maybe back to college, get a master's degree, which was stupid. So I did not do that, but I came across coding boot camps and Udacity. I looked at the two, realized I could do Udacity. So I started taking the Udacity Nano degree while I was still working, doing it part-time. And then I made the jump. I said, hey, I'm quitting in two weeks. And I'm gonna study this full-time. Now at this time, I had a lot of my coworkers say, oh, that's interesting you know, the condescending, oh, that's cool, or I hope it works out for you. It's ironic because some of these people are doing the same job that they had before, still miserable, still hating their lives, and I get to do some of the best work I've ever done in my entire life. Actually, it is the best work I've ever done. I'm passionate to get up to work, I'm passionate to go there, I come home and learn more, and there's just not enough time in the day to learn how to solve problems. It's amazing, but I digress. I studied for about five months through Udacity and self-education, building my own website, building other websites, blogging, and more of that content creation, and eventually getting onto YouTube with my first YouTube video about Microsoft Office and then all the online resources that I used. And that's how I got my following here on YouTube. Small as it may be, it's still a following. Now, when I graduated from the Udacity Now degree program, I did not have a job lined up but I did see one in the local newspaper for a social media manager. Now, because I had my blog, my videos, had experience with Photoshop, Adobe InDesign, Premiere Pro, and Illustrator, they took me on. What I did was I made a specific video cover letter for them and said I wanted to work for them. Showed them my videos, showed them my blog posts, and they brought me on. Compared to the one I had before, this one was much more aligned with what I wanted to do. And it was for an agency. So a lot of these agencies have high turnover anyways. I knew it was gonna be a great experience for me to really up my design skills. And at the same time, I got to do a little bit of WordPress for companies as well. I went through about 18 to 20 clients and I would juggle about 10 at a time, both with the company and of my own. It was a great time. I got way more experience in eight months than I ever could have anywhere else in these types of disciplines. But I saw another job in the paper for a place close to home. I made a custom bootstrap website, custom resume, sent it on over through Indeed, and they contacted me. It took about three to four weeks to get hired on. I didn't think I was gonna get the job, but I went to the interviews, answered the questions, talked with the CTO, and got hired on. It was an amazing experience, and after I told the social media place that I was moving on, I studied and studied and got ready. And I'm still studying today. It's one of the best experiences of my life. It was hard, it was gritty, but I was able to do it without the authority of someone else. I said, I want to do this, and guess what? I got to do this. That is amazing. If you want to become a web developer, you can. It might take a lot of time. It might take a lot of grit, but you can become one. If you can prove that you can build things that will help people, you are allowed to be in this industry. There are a lot of industries that aren't like that. Nowadays, 
like I said, all I do is study web development and just want to do more. Is it laborious? Is it terrible? Hell no! It's awesome! How many people get to say they get to do at work what they would do outside of work? I'm very lucky and I'm very proud of the work that I get to do. Of course, if you want to learn more about my coding experience or learning online, there's plenty of reviews here and I have some vlogs about my job and how I got my first job as well as how to become a front-end developer yourself, all on this channel. If you like this content, please consider subscribing or sharing this with someone that you know. That's it for today. Remember to always be learning and continually improving yourself and you will become a better person.